I've, I've always been a believer in the struggles men have in their minds and I've always spoke about it and I've suffered with them myself. And this is one of the things when I say like depression isn't real, people say, oh, you don't understand. Let me, let me counter that argument by saying, I understand very well. Me convincing myself and me deciding that depression isn't real is how I prevent myself from ever feeling depressed. And I can, I've only constructed that mental model because I've been in situations in my life where I felt depressed. I'm not saying depression isn't real because I've never felt depressed. I'm saying depression isn't real because I've been very depressed. The people don't understand where my mindset comes from. I understand struggle and mental health and all these things. And yeah, jail was another chance to certainly touch on them because in jail, you can, in, sorry, in real life, when you have my kind of resource, you can distract yourself very easily. If you're sitting around and feel a bit mopey, if I'm sitting here and I'm a bit like, oh, I can literally make a phone call and in 45 minutes be in the air on my way to anywhere on the planet with whoever I want to do anything I want. So you can distract yourself. I'm not saying it fixes all mental health, but it distracts you. Whereas in jail, you are stuck alone with your thoughts. And it was certainly a test of my mental resolve. And I would say that I passed. I, I did well. I, 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 there was never a day where I broke down. There was never a day where I couldn't handle it. There was never a day where I was, you know, I wasn't polite to the staff. I was very nice to everybody. There was never a day I couldn't hack it. It was certainly a test. And also, you know, Tristan said this. I don't want to take his words, but he's true. You go through life telling everyone you're the baddest motherfucker there is. Sooner or later, someone's going to test you. You walk in the pub and you say, I'm the hardest man there is. Sooner or later, someone's going to fight you. Sooner or later. And life's like that. You want to be the top G and you want to go through life and say, I'm the top G. Then God's going to say, well, we're going to see if you deserve to call yourself the top G or not. We're going to put you in a Romanian jail cell. We're going to leave you there to rot. You're not going to know how long you're in there for. And the biggest mind fuck is I thought I was going to be in there for years. I didn't. I had no idea. Everyone's telling me years, years, years. I thought I was going to be in there for years. So maybe God was just seeing, he was watching me and he was having a look and saying, you want to call yourself top G? Let's see. And I like to think I passed that test. So Tonight, it is what it is. But yeah, I agree with you in, in terms of mental struggles. Yeah, they exist for all men. And I also think that's one of the reasons I'm so large. I talk about those things a lot. I talk about those things a lot with men and I help men with them. And I try and say to men overall that life as a man is pretty shit. And you're going to feel shit for a pretty large percentage of the time. But you're only going to ever escape that if you just perform regardless. You have to perform when you feel bad. As a man, you can't say, I will perform when I feel good. It doesn't work that way because our heads are too complicated and life's too complicated. And there's too much on our shoulders. And we have too much stress, and too much pressure. Our heads are fucked. You have to be the kind of person who says, I perform regardless. I didn't miss a single day's training. I didn't miss a please. I didn't miss a thank you. I'm not saying I was happy. I'm saying I did exactly what I was supposed to do. The worst thing about prison, I think for everybody else, because there was a lot of men in there who were crying, a lot of men who were having mental breakdowns, I think it is the problem I didn't have, which is knowing that if you're a normal man, you go to jail, and they just pick you up and you go to jail. Who pays the rent? Who's feeding your kids? Who's your wife sleeping with? Like, like, life gets hard for all the external things you can no longer control, things that were your responsibility. I was lucky I didn't have those problems. And when I spoke to people, most people's issues were things that were happening on the outside. And I felt really good knowing that my life is set up in a way where even if I'm plucked from it, it operates. And I set that up because I thought they were going to kill me. Even to this day, if they shoot me right now, everyone around, everything would be okay. I don't have to exist for my life to function. So that was fantastic about jail. The worst thing about jail, I mean, the cockroaches started off really bad, but after a few days, it's amazing how quickly you used to cockroaches just in your bed. <laughs> You're just like, just kick them out of the way. That was kind of bad. But um, not knowing when I'm going to get out, that was bad. Having my name slandered all around the world, that was bad. Not knowing how people are reacting to it. Like the, my first time, month in jail, I didn't know if people believed this garbage or not. I, I had no access to the internet. I didn't see anything. There was a lot about it that was hard, but um, I have to believe it's gonna make me a better person. Why else would I, why else did I go? What did I go for, to waste three months? To stare at a wall for three months? Is that why I went to jail? No, I must have gone to jail to become a better person. I must have learned something. I have to self-analyze and find the lessons and pick it out. And I think a lot of people don't do that with all the bad situations in their life. And regardless of whether you went to jail or a woman left you or your business failed, whatever it is, you need to analyze the entire situation and say, okay, what can I learn? There's a, there's a big pile of shit here, but there must be a little bit of gold inside. So I've just tried to look at it as a massive learning experience and perhaps as a coping mechanism, but I've found a lot of lessons which I'm implementing. And, uh, and there's a very strong chance they're going to put me back. 
Not because I'm guilty, because I haven't done anything wrong, but because I'm currently in the middle of a, a, a judicial system. I'm in, I'm in the judicial system of a country. I don't truly understand the language. I don't understand the judicial system. I don't understand the charges against me. I don't understand how any of this can be legal. I don't understand how where it's come from. I don't understand the evidence they believe they have. And here I am stuck in this process. And who knows how it's going to end? There are moments in your life that you feel overwhelmed by life, by people, by your own circumstances, by struggles. We all get knocked down in every aspect of life. Life has a way of humbling you. Life will make you shut up. Life will mute you. You're going to feel awkward and stupid and dumb sometimes. At times you won't want to come out the house. At times you'll be feeling bad and don't know why what's wrong. I don't know. Just leave me alone. You will cry. You're going to fail and you're going to be in your head. You're going to be saying, I'm not good enough. But it's okay. It goes with the territory. It's a part of the deal. The real challenge of growth comes when you get knocked down. You got to get messed up sometimes. You got to get dirty. You got to get your feelings hurt. You got to get disappointed. You're going to ask somebody for some money. He's going to tell you no. That's just dirt. How you handle it, that's where the growth takes place. You want to take responsibility for your life. I got me here. I can get me out of this. If somebody came and knocked you down, there ain't nothing you can do about it. But if I come back a week later and you're still on the ground, we got a problem. You can decide that you're going to change, that you're not going to be a wimp. The way you were born, what happened to you is not your fault. But doggone it, you still on the ground after 20 years? See, you get tripped out because you got dirt on you. But you need dirt on you to develop. If you get knocked down, there's nothing you can do about it. But getting back up has every single thing to do with you. Don't you give up on your dream. Don't you do it. Don't you do it. Don't you do it. See, you get mad when haters come your way. You get mad because you get a setback. You get mad because they talking about you. That's dirt. You are not the only person that's been through a divorce, boo. Get over it. You're not the first one they let go of. You won't be the last one. The question is, what you gonna do about it? I'm not going to be a volunteer victim. You can decide that you're going to stand up to life. I just need you to identify what your pain is. And then I need you to ask yourself what you're going to do about it. And maybe you've been knocked down in your life and it seems like, hey, the fight is over. It is not over unless you quit. You can permit it to let it hold you down or you can decide I'm not going to let that happen to me. You have a choice to either give up or get up. You gotta get gritty, man. You gotta develop some dog in you. You can decide, I'm gonna work on myself and develop myself. I'm going to empower me. You have to learn to turn and look at every obstacle as an opportunity. I will not give up. Every time I get knocked down, I will get back up and I will succeed. I love myself enough not to be trapped in the same doggone spot for the rest of my life. No pain, no gain. Pain has a purpose. Your pain ain't permanent. It might last for a second. It might last for a minute. It might last for months. But sooner or later, if you do not surrender, if you do not give up, it will subside. Don't go through it. Grow through it. And as pain leaves your body, guess what's going to take its place? Success. You cannot build anything that won't bring a battle. And if you're going through a battle right now, it's only because you're building something. Stop running from your pain and embrace your pain. What will you do with your pain? Will you let it break you or will you let it redefine? Your pain is going to be a part of your prize. I challenge you to push yourself. You want affirmation, look yourself in the mirror and say, I think I can, I know I can. You've got to decide to be relentless. You've got to decide never to give up. Do whatever it takes. You're your biggest driver. You've got to find some reasons within yourself that will give you the stamina when life catches you on the blind side to keep on calling and coming back again and again and again. You see, the fight's not over if you've been knocked down. It's only over if you quit. Because life is a fight. It's a fight for integrity, your goals, your dreams, your ambitions. So every morning, I've got to wake up and I've got to fight. 
You gonna quit or you gonna make it to your silver? You gonna quit or you gonna make it to your gold? So you can stop waiting for it, you can stop wishing for it, and you can get on with the rest of your life. I gotta fight for my dreams. I gotta fight for character. I gotta fight for integrity. When you get to the point where enough is enough, doors start opening, opportunities start happening. But what you cannot do is you cannot quit during the process. All I'm saying is don't quit. I didn't say don't rest. Mentally, you can stay connected. But to win fights, you gotta have stamina. You gotta be ready to fight and bounce back. You better not feel sorry for yourself. You better get up and fight. And some of you are not successful because every single time you run up against a trial, you stop. I need you to match whatever effort the enemy is putting up. Match the doggone efforts. I'm gonna think, I'm gonna execute, and I'm gonna win. And that's how you get to the next level. You cannot give up because it ain't what you see. You cannot give up. It's when you have nothing left. It's when you depleted all your money. When you have nothing left, that's when it's showtime. At the end of play is your promise. So stop crying about it and use your energy to get through it. When you find a way out of no way, when you find breath that you don't have, when you want this thing as bad as you want to breathe, that's when you find a way. I cannot stop what happens to me, but I can dictate how I respond. I invested too much to quit. So when life happens, I don't just sit there and cry. I brought back. Because all of us, if you live long enough, will go through a period of feeling so overwhelmed. Sooner or later you feel, oh God, just get me out of this. I wish I could tell you it's gonna get easier. I wish I could tell you that, but that's not the truth. The truth is you gotta find something within. Life's gonna whip your butt. Life is gonna bully you. Stop crying, let it hit you, but don't let it punk you. And when you find out what your why is, when you find your why, you find a way to make it happen. And I'm telling you right now, don't give up, don't give in, get through it. I don't care if you're sick, I don't care what you're going through. If you're not dead, he ain't through with you yet. As long as there's breath in your nostrils, you're still in the game. You're going to be here one day, but you'll never get here if you give up. As long as there's breath in your nostrils, you still can win. And finally, guys, you got to want to succeed as bad as you want to breathe. And you will promise me that from this day forward, you will not be defeated. Somebody holler, I'm not dead yet. <laughs> Don't count me out. I may be sick, I may be crazy, I may be confused, but I'm not dead yet. Some people live in the cemetery of their failures. And I want to say to somebody who's fallen, or everybody hates you, and everybody walked away from you, don't live where they left you. Nudge somebody and tell them I will not die here. Whatever it takes for me to get out, I got to get out of here. I will not die on drugs. I will not die in depression. I will not die where you met me. I fought a good fight. Let that be your reputation. You fought a good fight. You kept out the ideology that wanted to capture your children, threatened every enemy that ever threatened you, fought like a parent protecting children in the home front. Let that be your reputation. You fought a good fight. And whether or not you won, at least let your reputation be that you fought a good fight, fought for your rights, fought for the game. You fought for your integrity. You fought for honesty. You fought for success. You didn't leave any energy unspent. You fought. The major key to have success of any kind. You've got to leave this reputation behind. I've fought a good fight. Wow. I kept the faith. Boy, that's important. Keep faith with your family. Keep faith with your enterprise. The group I belong to, we pledge our faith. Our unwavering confidence in each other. Each of us pledge that to all of us. And I wish for you to be in a group that has so much integrity. You want to be involved with people who pledge and keep your confidence. Allstate says you're in good hands. That should be the reputation of all of us. Develop the reputation of good hands so that no matter where you go, you will represent your family well, represent your company well, have integrity, honesty, 
And at the end of the road, don't you want to be able to say, I fought a good fight, I finished the job, and I kept the faith? Of course you do.